Okay class, in this video I'm going to go through using the interactive notebooks that you're going to be using for some of the course modules. Um, they can be found under useful links. Uh, the link to, to all the notebooks is uh, found under useful links here and I will also upload this video tutorial that will be under useful links um, here when, when it's complete. So under here is using Jupyter Interactive Notebooks and these um, interactive notebooks uh, I think it's best explained in a demonstration. So um, it says links to notebooks on Binder right here. So Binder is a, a website. Binder is like a three ring binder. Binder is a website that allows um, people like me to make a, an interactive notebook that I store in GitHub um, and then Binder allows people to access um, that notebook and work with it interactively and essentially what happens on Binder is I build the environment to run the notebook using Docker actually Binder builds the environment using Docker launches it on a server like Google service um, servers and then when you run the Binder web page it's actually uh, running that particular notebook um, from that server so it's free at the moment I don't exactly know why or how but um, we'll be using this uh, for the time being. So link to notebooks on Binder right here. Click on this. Okay, this is going to launch uh, my repository. Um, this can take 10 seconds up to a minute. Um, it depends how many changes I've made in the notebook. So essentially it's, re it's rebuilding the environment. Um, if I've added new depend uh, dependencies, it might take a little bit longer. I have only made edited the notebook, say changed a sentence or something, it will it will, run, it will launch more quickly. And this shows essentially is a reflection of my GitHub project page. Um, the README I have failed to put anything useful in there, but environment.yml is the file that Binder uses to build um, the Docker um, environment for the, um, the interactive notebook. And basically, it's the, the dependencies, um, the code dependencies from the notebook. For example, I'm using Python, so I have NumPy in there um, and some other modules that I'm including. So for the Waves module, which is uh, which is which happens to be next Thursday from the point where we're making this video, there's two notebooks you have to go through. And I'll just launch one of them right now, which is Wave Basics, which is the first one that you'll be going through. And so you click on this, IPyYNB stands for IPython Notebook. And um, these notebooks were originally from a project called IPython. Um, it's now been absorbed into what's called Jupyter, um, and the ability to run code within an interactive notebook has expanded to other kernels. So you can use you can use it to embed uh, Ruby, um, I believe, Julia, probably R, um, some other coding languages. You only see Python in here when you see code. Um, so I'm going to click on this. It will launch the notebook, the first one you're supposed to go through. Um, and so this is a notebook and it's stuff to read through, but now the first thing you want to do, because there's actually executable code in here that makes um, little interactive demos that you'll be doing. There's other code that launches YouTube links, launches images, this and that. So the first thing you want to do is go here, click Cell, and click run all. Now there's a hotkey that will do this as well, but I think it's good at the moment just to be using the menu. Cell run all. So it's going to run all these code blocks. I'll just give you an example one. There's one right here. It's a code block right here. This is a piece of Python code. Don't worry if you're not familiar with Python code, but it should look like other languages you've seen. And it does some stuff here. It just plots a simple harmonic function. It happens to plot the sine function. No plot is appearing here because this code has not been executed. Um, so we're going to hit cell run all, and each of these are cells. The notebook's made of a number of cells. This is a text cell, this one right here. Um, the text is written in mark um, down language, um, and then when you when it's executed, it converts it to this nice looking, well, reasonably nice looking text. Quite simplistic, but nice looking. Um, here's another cell right here, um, and then the third cell happens to be a piece of code, and then another cell is a text cell. Um, and so I want to execute all these cells. So I'm going to go cell, run all. Now over here, you'll see, if you see the mouse, is a little, actually it ran very quickly, but 
This will turn dark for a second while it's running, and it comes back um, to uh, being um, uh, light again. And so I'm going to rerun it twice. Occasionally, sometimes one of the cells won't run. I don't know exactly why. So I, I'm going to do a run all twice, just to be sure. Um, and if you see something missing, you can execute an individual cell by clicking on the cell and just hitting run right here, and it'll run the code in the cell. So this figure was already produced by this code block, so it's sitting there. Um, but this allows me to also make changes, and I'll give an example of that in a second, and rerun the code. Um, so you read through, oops, I'm already at the bottom, I not realize that, I apologize. So what you're going to do is this is a learning exercise. So you're going to be reading through the notebook from top to bottom. Um, the top just gives you a background on how the notebooks are supposed to operate and, and it's sort of a summary of what's in this particular notebook. Um, this one's about waves, a very general notebook about waves and how we model them mathematically. Um, different types of waves are described here. The notebook will co contain links. Um, for example, here I was talking about Mar Marconi's radio wave transmitter. I can see it's spelled wrong here in Wellfleet. And I click on this, it'll open up a new page um, if you're interested in reading about Marconi's little rig here. Pretty amazing. This was up in Wellfleet, the original wireless array, and this is a spark gap transmitter. So it was generating these huge, very loud sparks for the neighbors. Um, but the sparks induce radio waves, and that's what he was transmitting to Nova Scotia. Uh, anyway, so that some links open here. Here's some links to some YouTube videos right here. Um, so that's... Uh, as you go through your reading, there's some links to look at. Um, generally, sh I won't put any long videos. These will, all, these will all be a minute or two, most of these videos. Then we go into this next section talking about surface gravity waves here. Um, you'll see some math in here. And there's some questions and interactive exercises. And as described at the top, these aren't required, but these are helpful just things to sort of ponder. For example, which function cosine or sine is symmetric? Um, it's something is a question here. I define what it means but to be symmetric, and you can think about which function um, has that property. Here's an interactive exercise, also optional, but something you could try. Here's plotted, for example, this code block generates um, a sine wave, the blue curve, a cosine wave, the orangey curve, um, and over some interval of x from 0, here happens to be 4 pi. And is an example to say, okay, what happens if I extend that interval? Here, try doubling the range of x to 0 to 8 pi, and we're running the code block. You look through here and say, I'm not familiar with Python, but I can clearly see something's going on here, 0 to 4 pi. So let's switch this to an 8 here, and I can hit run, and it will regenerate. You can see we have more sine waves from right here, and I'll put it back to 4 here, um, and I'll hit run, and I'll put it back to the, where it was. So you can modify the code if you're curious about, okay, what would happen, for example, in the other notebook if I change the depth of the water um, in the second notebook you'll be working on? What would happen if I change depth? Well, depth we've just written right there, say it's 5, change it to 10. So, and rerun. So you can see quickly what happens as you do that. I've also built in um, some interaction into some of these plots. I'll show an example of that. So the next section here is talking about amplitude. I'm just scrolling through. What is the amplitude of a function? Another interactive exercise here. And this shows another code block, which includes this interactive uh, widget. I have to call it widget. That interactive widget allows you to sort of slide this back and forth. And so we have the original pure sine wave here, which is the blue curve. That's just sine of x. And a sine of x, where we multiply it by some amplitude. Um, is the red curve, and by messing with A, you can see what happens when I change the amplitude, only the amplitude of a sine, of a sine wave. Um, and obviously it, it doesn't change the phase, it doesn't change the wavelength, but it does change um, the height, maximum height that the function reaches above and below <coughs> the mean value here, which happens to be zero. So that gives some interaction. There's probably some other interaction in here. Going through wavelength, yep, so you can mess with the wavelength. Um, going through period, you can mess with the period, so on and on. Um, also, just sort of more basic stuff, talking about um, 
the, the, uh, the distribution of waves in the ocean, sort of classifying them by their period. Um, and so this paragraph up here talks about this, and it's, there's a chart supplied here um, to give that sort of context. Um, so that's what you'll be doing in these notebooks, essentially reading through, following some of the web links that we have, um, some of the tutorials that we have, and, um, and using these interactive code blocks, such as this one, to, to work with the data. Um, that's particularly useful in the next notebook, which goes into surface gravity waves. Um, here, this tool here has two um, interactive sliders right here to mess around with the, the, the phase and, and um, period of the waves. And, and then talking some images, talking about some more complex waveforms. Again, here's another wiki page, which will bring up uh, the sinoidal waves in the wiki page. I don't think I have any videos embedded in here. I know of. Um, I will mark sections that I feel are optional as optional. For example, here, measuring wind waves. I put optional here, and this is a section about how buoys like this one um, actually come up with an assessment of the wave state. And so it gets into linking, linking accelerations, which buoys can measure fairly easily, to uh, measuring position. Um, and so this goes into a little bit of math about that. Um, but I did put optional here because I felt that well, that was not a necessary uh, thing for you to learn. So that's the end of this. That's this notebook. You'll go through that. Um, when you're done with a notebook, what you're going to do is you don't need to save it because you haven't made any permanent changes to it. You won't, even if you augment the code, it doesn't affect anything in my Git account. Um, you're going to sit, you're going to hit file close and halt, um, and that will exit the notebook. Um, if you have a second notebook to look at, for example, in the, the preparation for waves, there are two notebooks. There's Wave Basics, which goes through this little math function, and there's more specifically a notebook on surface gravity waves, which will open here. And this goes, says, okay, surface gravity waves are a particular kind of wave with a particular restoring force. It adds a new variable, which is the water depth, which is a part of the waves. But otherwise, the notebook's a similar sort of format. There's some text to read, there's some links if you're interested, um, and there's some interaction, interactive, let me find it, interactive. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to run it. So again, when you open the notebook, run all. This one will run a little longer because it has some more serious functions to plot. So this notebook has, I hit run all, I'm going to do it twice as I did the other one. Okay, so this one has some embedded videos. Here's one about wave refraction. So I have a section in the notebook about refraction, talking a bit about refraction. And then there's a beautifully done <coughs> YouTube video, um, I think from a... Um, believe as I forget what school this is from but um, from YouTube so I've, I've embedded that in here so you watch the video it's in a few minutes there's a nice video by the same professor on longshore um, drift uh, and so you'll be watching that as well this notebook also contains some interactive um, some interactive uh, Code blocks here, plotting the, for example, the velocity below um, the velocity below a wave, where you can adjust the wavelength. You can play here the velocity field, the motion, the velocity field. I'm not sure how this is going to show in this recording because I'm not recording at a very high frequency. Um, and so you can see the spinning of the waves. If you click this, it goes into continuous motion. Again, it may be jumpy in the video I'm recording. And then. Um, uh, so you have interactive notebooks like that, some questions you need to think about. This shows the uh, velocity and pressure field below a wave, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going backwards here, but you want to move forwards from the top of the notebook and down and work your way through the examples, the code blocks, read the text, and the embedded YouTube videos. When you're done with this notebook, you hit File, Close and Halt, and you're done. And once you're, you're back to your main notebook page here, they get launched from the My Courses link. Um, and you're going to hit Quit. And it should tell you something about um, you shut down Jupyter. You can now close this tab to use Jupyter again. 
you'll need to relaunch it. And so that just tells you it's safe to kill the tab. And at this point, I'm going to kill the tab. You may get something popping up saying something like you have unsaved changes. If you happen to change a code block, um, you could just say, OK, you know you have unsaved changes. OK, so server stop. I'm going to close the tab, and we're done. Um, and again, this was launched from useful links under My Courses. All right, that's all.